activate. This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. So anyway, so here's this contention going on. People who decided that they would follow their own truth and they justified the killing of Jesus. And Pilate, who still believes there's nothing that Jesus has done that deserves death, because the only thing that they can come up with is blasphemy, Pilate says that's not grounds for death. He decides to play to the crowd. And so what he says in, in John 18, verses 39 to 40, he says, look, you have a custom that I should release one, one guy at the Passover. There's nowhere else in, in, in history that we can find that, but apparently it was something that went on because it's written about in the Scriptures. And it was something that happened. And so uh, he says, who, who, who do you want me to release? And he didn't even, at this point, we, we don't see this, but apparently he just says, who do you want me to release? And they said Barabbas. He didn't give them a choice, say, okay, do you want me to release Jesus or do you want me to release, release Bab, uh, Barabbas? They said, he said, who do you want me to release? And they came up with the idea of Barabbas. Now, Pilate completely miscalculated the attitude of the crowd at this point. Uh, they had been instructed by the priests to ask for the death of Jesus. So the crowd that was there, remember this is the crowd that's in this, in this uh, courtyard, um, uh, this, and they're the ones that are there demanding uh, the death of Jesus. So when Pilate says, look, I'm going to release somebody. It's the custom here to release somebody, one prisoner. Who do you want me to release? Boy, they immediately said, Barabbas. Now, Barabbas was a thug. That's what he was. Uh, the Bible, uh, he was more than likely a guerrilla resistance fighter of some sort, political resistance fighter who had been captured by the Romans. See, he's, he's being held by the Romans. He's not being held by the Sanhedrin. He's being held by the Roman government. Why was he being held by the Roman government? Well, the word that's used for robber here is really misinterpreted. It's a word that actually means uh, an outlaw. And it also is a word that's used for a political rebel. So it's not like he was a thief in the sense that he would go shoplifting and things like that. He was a political rebel. He was an outlaw. And they knew who he was. The name Barabbas is interesting. It means son of the father. Son of the father. Isn't that interesting? It's an Aramic term, meaning son of the father, and an irony that the rebellious son of an earthly father was released, but the son of the heavenly father was crucified. So Pilate apparently decides to do something that he thinks will appease the mob, and, so he, and he has Jesus flogged. Um, Luke 23 says it this way. Pilate says this, verse 15 in Luke 23. Look, nothing deserving death has been done by him. I will therefore punish and release him. This is what Pilate's willing, willing to do. He's released Barabbas, He's now willing to release Jesus. And back in John, chapter 19, verse 1, then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him, or had him flogged. And the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in, in a purple robe. And they came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck him with their hands. See, Pilate was hoping that the crowd would be satisfied with a little blood. Uh, the Roman flogging, by the way, was done with a leather whip and bits of metal. I want you to see this picture. This is, uh, this is kind of a, a recreation, uh, but it would have uh, some cord, and it would have either these metal balls in it, or sometimes they would even tie in pieces of bone or pieces of metal that were kind of like a butterfly shape. And, uh, and that's what they would whip them with. And it was just incredibly brutal, incredibly painful. In fact... Uh, they normally had a law the, the, was that you could only whip somebody 40 times because it would incur death. The Jews, when they followed it, said no, 39, because they didn't want to violate the law. And, uh, but Pilate wasn't under the law. He was the law. So they, they could beat Jesus as much as they want. And there were apparent instances, there are some historic evidence, that they would, they would just whip people to death, sometimes 100 times. So we don't know how many times Jesus was whipped, but apparently they, they began flogging him. And they, while they were flogging him, they um, put this mocking crown of thorns, 
and a purple robe that ridiculed him as a king. Now, the white robe came from Herod. The purple robe came from Rome. Rome, That was the color of royalty for the Romans. And so they put this purple robe on him, and they put this crown of thorns on him, all part of this intent to humiliate him. I'm going to stop here, uh, and I want to pick up with this uh, next Sunday. We'll get into uh, what happens here. And there's some pretty interesting things about what all of this meant, the purple robe and the thorns and and uh, the, all of that stuff, the flogging. And so we'll follow up on that next Sunday. Uh, hasn't this been an uplifting lesson? <laughs> so encouraging and motivating. Uh, but that's what Jesus went through for you. That's what he went through for you. And that's what man who is in rebellion against God will do. That is what man is capable of doing when he seeks his own truth. On behalf of Dan Hurst and the Open Class, we want to thank you for watching. We hope it was a